Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shuang Yian. I'm a senior lecturer in the High Performance Network Group, Smart Internet Lab in the University of Bristol. Today, I would like to thank the subcommittee to offer me this opportunity to present our research toward deployment of machine learning in optical networks, transfer learning, monitoring, and modeling. So my talk will start to review the machine learning applications in optical networks. We try to recognize some unanswered questions for deployment of machine learning model in optical networks. Then I will introduce our work related to the field trail testbed, and then I will conclude this talk. Machine learning definitely very hot topic in optical networks. And one of the application is to estimate or predict of the quality of transmission per channel or the unestablished channel. And this application arises from the requirement we want to make the network more dynamic. So the link service time will reduce dramatically, not like before. And uh, so the dynamic network that require more high precision for quality transmission and to achieve low margin networks. So in here, the quality of transmission traditionally we've done, we have done, we have been doing is to measure that and optimize that. Now we need to do in automatic way. So machine learning definitely play a role for the quality of transmission prediction. And the beginning, and there are the random forest based estimate to do the classify and they can offer only the based on the topology information they can get uh, okay or not okay information they get that information but that is not enough and they are also to work using the uh, AN that is artificial neural net network that is also our approach and beginning to using some information to predict and also in the distributed way they try using the transfer learning that are using they only using the optical spectrum information that is related to the network and uh, to for the quality transmission there are also other approach the there are also development goes noise model and gene model so they can use that model and to predict the quality or estimate the quality of transmission and that is also the, the continual uh, way they are using that actually to give the information for plan the network. And so they're always the trade-off for the complexity of the model and of the precision. And also because that will re require in dynamic network, they require in the real time. And also there are the uh, application or there are the requirement using machine learning to extract the models, extract the parameters for, for batch modeling, or they can use them for network facility monitoring. And uh, this is a two uh, very important application related to machine learning in optical networks. And recently there are a lot of research regarding transfer learning. Uh, in transfer learning, I would like to talk more, a little bit more is uh, in traditional transfer learning, we're talking uh, transfer knowledge from one source domain and two target domain, they are, maybe they are not same, but in optical networks, we're using the transfer learning is to try to transfer knowledge from uh, a network to another network. And uh, so for example, we can transfer from a source system and to a target system. And so you they can reduce um, the training samples and or reduce the train, uh, the train consuming, consuming time. And this is um, a one way. And another way is using a transfer learning to transfer knowledge from available analytic models or simulation software. So you can get a pre-trained model with reasonable precision. And uh, then with the practical data, you can further fine tune this, uh, this model to get better performance. And uh, so they also provide a way for further skill up to a more complex network um, networks. So that is also the approach I would like to deploy in, I would like deploy in this, uh, in this talk. So I'll start talking about back to 2017. We, we have a one uh, post, and post deadline paper that is uh, using machine learning over uh, STM based uh, optical network. Actually that is our 
approach we think for the quality prediction it always need to get the device data it may be from test bed or from other but always we're looking to from the device data to explore the dynamics and with this data and with this you can make get more precise predictions to handle no linearity and also the link channel occupations all this information and uh, so that is our approach and looking to the test bed looking to the practical data and so in that case we developed the cloud monitoring and configuration database and so we want using the debate to enable more applications not only machine learning for example the device maintenance and so the start point we're only looking to one channel and and looking to the machine learning and integrate with sdn and in the post and post and paper and the later we and so this is a the work uh, the our the developed cloud monitoring configuration database the concept and uh, over the network and we collect the information from the the controller and from all network configurations and also we get information from the mounting uh, monitoring device the traditional monitor only using for local now we use that we upload that information to cloud so we can get we say end to end monitoring data so with this design actually you can have a dedicated hardware computer hardware for this analytics and more powerful data processing capability and you also have a link to access to monitoring resource and you can reuse this end-to-end -end monitoring data and not only for one applications so on on this on top of the database you can develop many applications and for network abstraction and network analytics and also monitoring triggered applications so this is a database and if we go look go to further to this detail we we design this uh, for per link way and we want to associate all these parameters relate the link and to the transmitter from the transmitter and to the device key device and transmission uh, links spans edfs and nodes and then go to the receiver and we want to collect all this information in the in the in the time in our in database and link to the to the uh, to the transmitter so record any change in the networks so we can uh, collect all the configuration and monitoring information and to the database and so this is the design of database and then we implement this concept over our field trail test bed so this is i show the national duck fiber facility that is a, a link that connect from uh, west of england Bristol, that's where uh, our school, our university located, and uh, to UCL in London and Cambridge. And uh, so this link actually using commercial available device and uh, they have SDN enabled optical switches and optical amplifiers. They also allow remote configurations. And uh, the total link is around 630 kilometers single mode fiber. So we implement this database and over this test bed to collect the information. And uh, in the latest uh, experiment, we sent um, totally 24 channels and to the link. And uh, we developed this automatic uh, configuration. So you can generate any uh, combination of your channel allocations channel combinations and turn on and off uh, different transmitters and go through the link and record the performance and get the data to our database and we send the, the, the channel and over and over the link around 563 uh, kilometers and using other uh, 16 quorum signal or qps signals so this is we collect a lot of information and what we try to using this um, this data is to achieve one the scenario the number scenario is for multiple channel prediction so you see this is a this is spectrum and we have the uh, eight uh, totally 16 neighbor channel neighbor channels and we are looking to this abstraction area there is eight channels we want to see whether we can develop model to handle 
the dynamic for this A channel. Any combination, can we predict if we set up a new link that it first work? Can we predict that on established channel, uh, the performance? And the second thing, and if we add that link, we want to evaluate the impact that a new link on the current channels. For example, you already have four channels there. You have you set up a new link. What's the impact on the current four channels? Consider you are we're talking low margin networks. Really care about to avoid if the new link set up there. We won't get the best performance. We on, also want minimize impact on the current channels. So this is the network scenario, and based on data, we develop this model uh, using. All the parameter is from the, the, the database from our test batch, uh, including launch powers and EDFA parameters, input, output. You have multiple EDFAs, you know that along the link. And also the laser bias. And also we, we add the, the channel hot coding there to uh, embed the, the, prim, the information of the channel occupation. And uh, so for the output layer, we have eight output that is corresponding to A channels. And so you can do one model to predict this A channel together. And so this is our, it is a detail of the machine learning model. And you, and so uh, looking to the learning curve, you find that uh, the proposed uh, artificial neural network model and I have a very small uh, mean square error and uh, you see when the database over 20, uh, 250, you achieve very high uh, um, precision. And uh, we also evaluate for, for the testing data. And with the 300 training data, you get the, the, mean, the mean absolute error is around 0 0.11 dB. And they, they can further convert the, with more data. So that is always I think that is uh, if you want to see the detail, you can check this paper and uh, in, in GLT we published uh, this year. So with this developed uh, artificial neural network model and uh, we look into the scenario. So this is show the different case. And for example, this case one. So you already have channel three is on and we won't see and other available seven channels, which channel give the best performance and based on the, the, the link situation. So you can predict other links performance with predict unestablished channels. And this is the second case, you already have two channels established and you see the different combination. They already have the uh, channel established. This one is one, five and seven established. So you can predict the other, the other channel uh, the, the, the available channel performance to choose the best performance channel. And uh, this result show that we already, uh, we choose that channel, we find that channel give the best performance. So we choose that channel, we evaluate the current uh, established channel impact on the current established channel. If you add that new link, what's the impact on the current channel? And uh, this is show a uh, very uh, a few impact when you add that new link. That is because our link is quite quite stable. Maybe it not so, uh, you know, not so in the in the, the dynamic effect that. But this is definitely show that the model we can do is to predict the established channel and also reevaluate the impact on the current channels. So you always get the best performance and avoid any disturbance to your current channel. So this is um, uh, the work. And also we have another uh, really work is using this database. And if you have a history data and you definitely can do more things about prediction. And so we test our, death, our test bed uh, several days and we collect the data and we want to use, we try the different model to predict the performance. And so you see the model can quietly give a very good uh, performance prediction. And also they say that if you have this uh, using some training and do the prediction quite good. And we, we deploy the different models. I think, but most important for this work, it relates, if you really have this time domain 
uh, moon data in your history, they can provide a lot of information for your facility management. And you can look into um, for aging and other things and to predict based on your history data. So this is another very interesting we are looking to. And so this is uh, uh, machine learning uh, models we are employing up to networks. And, uh, but we do recognize and to deploy them, there's still a lot of challenging. So one of the challenging uh, come from is really, we need a lot of data to train our model. And when you don't have that for a new network, you don't have the data available, how you get a model and how to make that work. This is one challenging. We hope to solve that it's connect to our available knowledge. If we have our models, our simulation software, whether we can connect that knowledge and to support our planning and also using the planning data to improve the precision of the prediction model. So this is what we hope that to use to solve this challenging. And second challenge is in the machine learning model in optimal networks, when we deploy that, you may need to update or validate. And we do need a machine learning life cycle to manage the models and to achieve model pre-training, validation, and retraining. And uh, so this is second challenge. So start with the machine learning life cycle, we're using the transfer learning. It's using transfer learning to incorporate synthetic data and practical network data. And uh, so using, then using practical data for model fine tune and validation. So this is a, a the general machine learning model uh, life cycle management. We start with task management and then we, we uh, get the, this data synthet synthesized. You get synthetic data for to, to do then precise uh, the, the, the process and get a, a pre-training, a pre-trained uh, model and then you using in the model design, you came up with the, the transfer learning and to get that transfer to your test bed and then validate in your test bed with the, the further, with the field, uh, with real uh, network data. And there also the way to optimize and the retraining and then you deploy to the network. So this is a, um, still, uh, still need working on that it is a model we're using the transfer learning to connect synthetic data and practical data and practical network data. So we show one case and for quality of transmission with a transfer learning to connect synthetic data and uh, uh, network data. So uh, the synthetic data, it come from a, a, a ghost noise based analytic model and we're using GMPY and we generate uh, some data points and with the same uh, same setup and our experiments. And so we get 1,000 data points for model pre-training. And this is show the process our source learner trained. So we pre-train the model and with this simulate uh, uh, synthetic data. And then we get the high parameters and architecture are transferred from the source learner to our target learner. And so after the transfer learning, we get the model and then we refine, we fine tune the model with a few experiment data. So we reduce the data. So we, then we get the model and test with different case. And this is show quite um, a similar performance uh, compared to your, to the uh, previous work. And you see, but this I need to point out, this is S not, it's not DB. So you see this is 40. If you, if you convert to DB, it's around 16. This is our uh, similar, uh, this is several case for the prediction with this transfer learning based model. We achieve um, the mean square error around 0 0.27 DB across 100 test data points and very high precision. And this is quite similar performance but with less data and uh, reduce the train time. And let's see the comparison. We compare this transfer learning and with the training from scratch. And uh, if you see this, this curve, this is uh, using transfer learning and also with uh, and from scratch training from scratch, we find the transfer learning based approach, they are uh, achieve convergence in much 
quick uh, in much short time into advocacy are uh, converged but for the uh, if you train that from scratch you will need more epoch to get to get converged so and with that the training time uh, based on single hardware they dramatically reduced and uh, so in this case we reduce from 19.47 uh, second to 6.67 uh, second but in the transfer learning definitely we not include pre-model training but the pre-model training it can be done independently to our um, system so this is uh, the training time and also very important that we achieve significant reduction in practical data and in this transfer learning we we're using only 200 data samples to achieve similar performance and compare from the training from scratch you were, were using 1000 data samples and but they get similar um get a similar uh, performance so that is a uh, uh, actually converse and that is a uh, conclude that is that we get similar performance with less data and less training. The reason is we connect our knowledge from modeling by synthetic data. And so there are extra features that we can, the more availability before the data, we have a fair and the reason can be used the model and for our network. But with more data available, you definitely can improve the model and get more precise prediction and you can get the from uh, your validation uh, data from your future data like get validated your model for general synthetic data and uh, so model pre-training and can be done independent to our network management hardware so you're running your um, machine learning application for network, maybe the training can be done in other places. You don't limit it because you uh, they can be done independently. So this is uh, with transfer learning and uh, you we connect to synthetic data and we achieve similar performance with less data and reduce the training time. And we think uh, transfer learning can play a role to build a workflow for machine learning model deployment. So this is the, the, the today's talk. So I would like to conclude my talk. And firstly, definitely no doubt, machine learning model will be deploying networks. If not whether or not is how and when. And uh, so machine learning model, they get benefit from uh, analytic model simulation system, our theoretical research will definitely benefit the machine learning models. We think they need to connect. So, but I, for machine learning model work, practical data from the real test bed or from your practical network, it's of critical importance for dynamic networks. And uh, so there are still a lot of work, but the machine learning lifecycle management, it, based on machine learning, it provide a possible way for the deployment and uh, reduce the data, but most important, connect to our available knowledge, our understanding of optimal networks. And now they get a benefit and reduce the data requirement for provide a possible way for the deployment of the networks. But definitely there are more challenges like in elastic network, if you have dynamic spectrum location, how you have that. And if you have intermediate node and drop, that's still we are working on that and hoping in the short time we can share some result with you. And uh, so that will be, um, that's it, my, my talk. And uh, this work is supported by Tuken and uh, NDFF project from EPICR SRC. And thank you for your attention and thank you for your time. And if you have any questions and uh, send me email, probably I will available for the discussion. Thank you very much.